Hey everybody, Jake here. Just wanting to give you guys an update. Today is Sunday, 27 September. It's nighttime, obviously, is when I get a lot of my work done. Just kind of wanted to give you an idea of what I've got accomplished since the last update, which is actually a whole lot of stuff. I'm a little bit behind still, but only maybe about three weeks at this point. So, making a lot of tracks. Uh, Mr. Collier's engine has continued to give me some challenges because that's just what happens when you do work for him and everything's outside the box. I'm going to turn you around now and show you what I got going on here in my world. Okay, so this is a 2563 Type 4, and this belongs to a customer from Canada who will be getting this update. And um, this engine is going into a Porsche 912E. Uh, so it's got thermal dispersant coatings on the cylinder heads. The customer requested that I paint the crankcase black, which I actually used a uh, Lycoming aircraft engine paint to do that. And it turned out really, really well. I don't really like painting crankcases, but this one had a lot of stains on it that just would not come off. And I don't like to blast cases because I feel that it impregnates material in the crankcase that can contaminate the oil. So with this one, we decided to paint it and it did turn out stunning with all the zinc chromate fasteners. And I had all the original hardware off this engine plated, which is something that I typically do if, if the engine's going into a Porsche application uh, where people are looking for that chromate. So we can talk about that when I get ready to do your engine. Uh, I don't like to use stainless steel fasteners on engines because they're not magnetic, and if you lose one, well, you can't pick it up with a magnet, okay? So, um, you know, that's just one of those things that I've got a personal preference as an engine builder about. So, um, you can see the 102 millimeters Nikki cylinders here, um, even plated the dipstick and that sort of thing. This is kind of a, a typical long block uh, that would be something that I build, just so you guys, guys kind of get an idea of how sanitary it is. Uh, this goes into it, like I said, a 912E, so I'm doing my full flow oil system just a little bit differently. It'll make it easier to install that into the car. Um, I'm gonna roll it over here and show you guys the bottom side. And oops, spin it this away. And you can see I've got two of the push rod tubes pulled out now because it's time to do a valve train geometry and I've got to leave those two out to be able to do that. Uh, but yeah, this is just uh, attention to detail Jake style, and this one's turned out real well, so I'll have it completed probably middle of this coming week, certainly by the end of the month, I'll have this one ready to go on the dyno, and then I'm going to have basically a dyno week, okay? So I'll take you out here and show you a couple more things. I got the engine out of my German Army Beetle. I'm building that one for myself. I'm doing that for one of my articles in the Vintage Voice, uh, the Vintage Volkswagen Club of America technical articles that I do. And that is a rare German Army Beetle that was actually belonged to the German Minister of Defense himself. So uh, this is the engine out of it. I've got it all balanced up and ready to go together. I'm just taking my time with that one. I do it kind of in between jobs. Um, over here... I've got Mr. Collier's engine kind of bagged up right there, waiting on a few pieces to come back from being plated that the plater's actually goofed up. And this is a Type 4 crankcase that I'm going to use for a test engine that I'll be building right after I finish the 2563. And once I get this one done and the 2563, then I will be able to get the dyno going for basically about a two solid week period. Um, there's my Kubel wagon, and I'll take you back here and show you a 2316 that has been finished up, and it's waiting on the dyno as well. So I've got it all set in there, waiting to have all the final goodies put on it when it goes onto the dyno, and I've still got my daughter's engine on the dyno. I'm still working out a few bugs with the dyno itself. Uh, as far as getting some of the data signals from some of the sensors, it's been a little bit of a challenge. So I'm trying to work on that and get everything ready to go so when I decide to dyno everything, then I can just knock out like five engines, okay? So uh, hope you guys have a good week and I will give you another update when I make some more tracks, thanks.